This is Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. We are live in the nation's capital. Good evening and welcome. I'm Hawa Salihu Adama. We start with the latest on the coronavirus pandemic in Nigeria. 196 new cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, in the country. Of the new cases, there are 87 in Lagos, 24 in Kanu, 18 in Gumbi, 17 in Kaduna, 16 in the Federal Capital Territory, 10 in Kasina, 8 in Saukotu, 7 in Edo, six in Borno and one each in Yobe, Eboi and Adamawa states. As at 11.55 p.m. 29th of April 2020, the total number of confirmed cases had risen to 1,728. 307 patients have been discharged and 51 deaths recorded. We now join Mitaire Ikben for highlights on the PTF briefing. Hello, Mitaire. The number is rising and we know that the lockdown will be relaxed from Monday. What additional measures are in place to what we already have? Basically, the chairman of the presidential tax force uh, gave more insight into why the lockdown was uh, relaxed. According to him, it was to balance the health and wealth of the nation. And he said today that the Nigerians should not mistake in, Nigerians should not mistake the relaxation of the lockdown to mean that uh, they should engage in irresponsible behavior or action going forward. Uh, he advised Nigerians to ensure that they they maintain all the advisories, including observance of social distancing, as well as uh, observance of personal hygiene going forward. And again, today, the presidential tax force uh, told us that it has scaled up its response strategy. It has scaled up its response to assist the Kano state government in beefing up uh, its strategy in fighting the coronavirus. It says that emergency response teams of medical experts have already been dispatched to Kano and also a large cache of uh, medical equipment, including three ventilators and about 280 personal protective uh, equipment and uh, surgical guns have been dispatched to the state. All these are in a bid to scale up the response, especially at this, as it has to do with detecting, contact tracing, and testing in Kano. It says apart from the two labs already in place in Kano, it is also setting up a third lab uh, to, in order to boost the testing capacity in the state. Also today, the Minister of uh, Interior told us that the land, all land borders are being patrolled. Uh, a combined, combined teams of uh, security personnel are patrolling, have beefed up security along the land borders, all in a bid to prevent uh, foreigners, uh, perhaps foreigners who are infected with coronavirus, from making their way into the country. And this is also against the backdrop of uh, rumors that the Cameroonian flank, our borders with Cameroon, appear to be porous, but the Minister of Interior says this is not so, that security has been beefed up along all the land borders. And also today, the presidential tax force commiserated with uh, its national coordinator, Dr. Sanya who on a sad note lost uh, his father. So those are some of the highlights at the moment. Thank you very much, Mitari, for the update. And moving on, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control has commended the Benue State Government for its proactive measures in the fight against the spread of COVID-19. A representative of the center in the state, Professor Steve Abba, gave the commendation while reviewing the strength weaknesses, opportunities and threats in containing the pandemic in the state within one month. 
Charles Abba completes the report. Benue state government has continued to fight against the devastating effects of COVID-19 since the index case of the pandemic in Nigeria. It is to improve on the measures so far employed by the state COVID-19 action committee that informed the assessment. Representative of Nigeria Center for Disease Control, Professor Stephen Abba, who lauded the state for its commitment in containment of coronavirus pandemic, said it is not yet over. We foresee a situation where, as we exit the COVID-19 era, we would also enter into another era of difficulty. And Governor Samuel Otom, who approved additional 50 million naira to the COVID-19 Action Committee for continuous fight against the disease, appreciated NCDC for its partnership. I believe that very soon, this, uh, even the partial restriction will be over, so we can continue our normal life. If we close the boundaries and we have enough uh, face masks, then we can relax the lockdown uh, order. He announced that 200,000 face masks are being earmarked for distribution to Benue people alongside three trucks of rice received as palliative package from the federal government. In Makudi, Charles Abba, NTA News. No doubt COVID-19 has advanced from the phase of importation into the country to the phase of community spread and this has influenced a change in response strategy. Accordingly, the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency is set to train over 200,000 members of its workforce on preparedness and response. Olushe Adeagbo reports on the National Train the Trainers workshop here in Abuja. Drawing from experience gathered in the near eradication of polio and control of Ebola crisis in 2014, the strategy of building capacity of the primary health care workers is believed to be a potent weapon going into the next phase of response of the coronavirus pandemic. This informed the National Training the Trainers program via video conferencing with over 200 participants across the 36 states of the Federation and the Elf City, with only a few physically present. The strategy is one that has the support of the Minister of Health, Dr. Ozage Ehanore, who expressed belief that the control of community transmission of COVID-19 will be best achieved if primary health centers and the communities they serve are strengthened and the necessary information made available to limit the spread of the deadly disease. It is commendable that the National Primary Health Care Development Agency and development partners have come up with a comprehensive PHC guide and training plan to provide the strategic direction required to reduce the effect of community transmission. Officials say the aim is to scale up core capacity to efficiently respond to COVID-19 in a coordinated manner. Our traditional leaders were very, very central to our polio eradication efforts. They were very central to Ebola outbreak uh, response efforts. So we're using the same template to try and get to the communities, make sure that everybody is really mobilized, everybody feels part of the solution. Uh, teaching them how to track and identify cases and make sure that community transmission is controlled. The success the of these efforts this will be likely measured by the official numbers of confirmed cases in the days ahead. In Abuja, Ulusheye Adiagbo, NTNU. Still staying with COVID-19, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo has expressed the importance of providing support to small businesses in the informal sector as priority for economies aiming to lessen the adverse effects of the coronavirus pandemic. The Vice President, at a virtual conference organized by Africa.com, observed that though Nigeria's massive population constitute a challenge in the fight against the coronavirus, the advantage of being able to manage the issues in smaller measures through the states has enabled authorities to reassess responses across subnationals and adjust where necessary. The vice president said a lot has been done in, on conditional ta cash transfers, especially within the context of the social investment policies, and that government is now looking at how to possibly enlarge the scope of that and do more. News of planned gradual easing 
of the lockdown in Lagos and Ogo states, as well as the nation's capital, have been generating reactions with financial and public analysts torn between how best to guide the economic health of the country while prioritizing the general health of the people. Some argue that the economic scenario has drastically deteriorated amid the twin shocks of the COVID-19 pandemic and the global oil price crash. And so, the steps taken by the federal government are not only timely, but necessary for the country's survival. Tilewa Adebajo is an financial analyst based in Lagos. He joins us via Skype live to speak on how the gradual easing of the lockdown is likely to impact the nation. Hello and thanks for joining us on Nationwide. What are we likely to see in the financial market upon the immediate easing of the lockdown? me Mr. Chilewa I was wondering what we are likely to see well I guess we'll have to rejoin Mr. Adeba Juleta if the internet connection permits moving on President Muhammad Buhari has directed the nation's armed forces to sustain ongoing counter-insurgency operations on the fringes of Lake Chad and the entire northeast so that the Boko Haram menace can be totally eliminated. The president gave the directive after receiving an audience, Governor May Malabuni of Yobe State in the State House. The governor who briefed the president on the security situation in his state appreciated the federal government's decisive and proactive measures employed in the renewed onslaught against the Boko Haram terrorists. Governor Buni informed the president that if the tempo is maintained, Boko Haram will soon become history. President Muhammad Buhari noted with satisfaction the giant strides been recorded by the armed forces in the fight against insurgency and urged them not to relent in the discharge of their mandate. He warned against complacency in the task of ensuring that the nation's territory is no longer habitable for the terrorists so that sustainable peace and development can be achieved. Time to take a break. Nationwide returns shortly. Do stay. I wish to once again commend the frontline workers across the country who, on a daily basis, risk everything to ensure we win this fight. For those who got infected in the line of duty, rest assured that government will do all it takes to support you and your families during this exceedingly difficult period. I will also take this opportunity to assure you all that your safety, well-being, and welfare remains paramount to our government. I am using this opportunity to express our deepest condolences to the families of all Nigerians that have lost their loved ones as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is our collective loss and we share your grief. The glorious month of Ramadan is here again, and we at Al Habibia Islamic Society once again call on all faithful to observe the physical and social distancing directive of the government to curb the spread of COVID 19. Always wash your hands with soap and water, use hand sanitizers and face masks when necessary, and stay at home. Observe your obligatory salat, tarawi, tajud, du'as, and askars with your families from the comfort of your home. Stay at home, stay safe. Welcome there. Have you washed your hands? I'm inside my house again. This is not the key black man. Ah! I don't know if it's misinformation or poor hygiene that will kill you first. Coronavirus is real and good hygiene practice will save your life. Oh. Anyway, 
No hand washing, no eating. I will not take care of me. I swear to the is real and it's on the rise but you can help yourself and help others to be safe remember we can stop the spread it's in your hands this message is from the Akin Fadei Foundation in partnership with the National Orientation Agency with support from MacArthur Foundation I just don't understand this coronavirus thing is it real see coronavirus known as COVID-19 it's a global problem and has killed thousands of people in China Italy Spain UK, US, and other countries around the world. Okay. Now, why are they saying that we should stay home? Because if you go outside and get in contact with someone who is infected, you become infected and then come back home, affect your family. That's how it happens in other countries. Yeah. Now, please help me explain what this social distance is all about. You see, as we are now, the virus travels through the air and by touch. We must maintain six foot distance at all times. Oh, so it's not by washing my hands with soap and water or hand sanitizer that is only important. Washing of our hands regularly is very important. But we must come together and fight this virus like we did Ebola. It is our responsibility to each other. Thanks for rejoining us. Earlier, we had um, Mr. Tilewa Adebajo, a financial analyst based in Lagos, joining us by Skype. Mr. Tilewa, I guess you're back now. I, I was just wondering, I said, what are we likely to see in the financial market upon the immediate easing of the lockdown? Well, what we must, uh, good afternoon, and um, what we must realize is that uh, the financial markets did not actually stop operating all throughout this crisis. And I think that is the benefits of technology. Um, our electronic uh, transfer payment systems are very advanced, and most people had to do their work, electronic transfers, and if you needed cash, I think you could go to the ATM machines. Uh, stock market was continued trading. Um, government bonds were being traded, uh, both stocks and equities and bonds. Uh, it's only the foreign exchange markets that the central bank shut down during this period, and um, I think they have opened it uh, there. So, but I think what will happen is that uh, economic activity will pick up, but as you know, it's still going to be very limited because interstate movement has also been restricted. So, but at least within each state, you will have significant levels of increase in economic activity. All but controlled. Not every business, business can open. And uh, for those businesses who are opening uh, strict conditions, and I think not all the markets are going to be open. So it's still temporary and it's still step by step. Okay, is the market ready for that kind of activity? Well, the market, like I said, never stops. So they, what will just happen is that uh, activities will increase. Uh, people can start going to work, but most people have been trading remotely from their offices and from the comfort of their homes. Uh, the technology enables that to happen. Um, so you send money to your loved ones, you could pay for goods and services uh, all throughout this period using internet banking services. And so there's, what, what we will see is the fact that there's actually been an increase in that activity. And I think that we are moving effortless. One of the, I think, benefits of this whole um, lockdown is the fact that uh, we are moving effectively towards a, a cashless society. Okay, I guess the collapse in crude prices may likely hinder domestic production as it continues to batter national revenue. What short-term approaches can be used to absorb the shock of our current financial and economic reality? Well, unfortunately for us, we have a $15 billion 
in a budget deficit that the federal government has to fill. Right now, we already have seven billion. Yesterday, the IMF approved 3.4 billion. We're still waiting for some approvals from the World Bank and also the African Development Bank to make it seven billion. So we're still looking for another seven billion to balance our budget. So government in itself uh, is in a bit of a deficit and uh, they're struggling at the moment to, uh, to cover that gap, but significant progress has been made. Um, as you said earlier, we are suffering from twin shocks, a pandemic shock and also an economic crisis. With oil prices uh, at where they are right now, government revenues from oil has been reduced by about 90%. Uh, and even at that 90% reduction of uh, oil revenues by government, uh, we're still struggling because we're not able to sell the oil. Uh, so the immediate impact is that FAC allocation and uh, the state governments are going to suffer significantly. And we might get to a situation whereby maybe in the next couple of months there might not be any money available for them if they haven't financed it. But luckily, I think some palliatives have been done through the World Bank window where some money was sent out to the state governments uh, yesterday. And I think government has announced some economic plans. The central bank is coming up with one trillion intervention for the uh, manufacturing sector, a 500 billion support fund, and all the other palliatives to ease the impact of this. But again, I think what is more important for us now is that the seven billion that we are getting, uh, I think it's important that we invest it in the healthcare and to be able to get some testing kits and get to the bottom of this problem because we are not yet there. And opening up the economy at this time also has its dangers. Okay, I'm just also wondering, considering the fact that we tend to depend solely on this particular source of revenue that is um, challenged at the moment, how do you think we could look inwards? We have an energy deficit in Nigeria and also in Africa. How can we look inwards? Well, I think one of the best signs so far is the fact that yesterday, I think the Senate approved an 850 billion financing. That financing was originally supposed to be for external borrowing, which is cheaper. But right now, that 850 billion would be raised locally. And I think that the domestic capital markets, I think, has the capacity to be able to support whatever funding government needs to be able to take it through the next one year. So that is uh, in terms of the depth of our capital markets. However, what is more important is the structural adjustments that we need to put in place. Uh, we have a fiscal challenge in the sense that government has to streamline uh, their system. From what I understand, I haven't confirmed it yet, that the president has authorized the secretary to the government to implement the Oronsoye report, which is a report which talks about how to streamline government. Uh, if this is true, that the president has approved this, then this is a step in the right direction to right-size government. Uh, because if we're not careful this year, we might be borrowing money to pay uh, interest on loans. Because 60% of our revenues is was actually going towards debt service. But what we need to ad address right away now is this pandemic and the health crisis with testing kits. Okay, before I let you go, Mr. Uh, Adebajo, I was just thinking, what would be your projection on when the financial market is likely to recover from this um, contraction? Well, what we must understand, first of all, is that mm. this is not a financial crisis. Sure. And uh, the financial system has not been impacted. What we have is a health crisis which has led to an economic crisis. Um, it is clear from all indications that we are going into a recession by year end. Uh, so both what we're seeing is how will the economy recover? Um, uh, so we're trying to see what programs that the government will put in place. And what is important is that we need to determine who in government is going to lead this process. We need to get the central bank, the federal ministry of finance, the Federal Ministry of Trade and Investment, and of course the Minister or the Ministry of Health to be coordinated by somebody in the presidency to be able to see us out of this problem. The projection for economic contraction is anywhere between 2% and 8% of our GDP in terms of contraction. The leadership that we provide 
can help us make this as less painful as possible. But my projection is that we will not see economic recovery until first quarter 2021. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tilewa Debajo, a financial analyst based in Lagos. We appreciate your coming on Nationwide today. Thank you very much and have a good afternoon. Okay. And it's now time to join Michael in our Lagos Network Center for more reports on Nationwide. Hello, Michael. You're on. Hello. How are you? A whistleblower system aimed at exposing businesses and individuals flouting social distancing and lockdown order will soon be set up in Lagos State. Governor Babajide Sanwolu, while addressing newsmen on the efforts to contain and manage COVID-19 in the state, disclosed that more than 1.5 million households have been reached in the door-to-door -door COVID-19 active case surge. New South Sula reports. The governor who stated that government would ensure strict compliance with vehicular movement restrictions at the state borders said it had been discovered that trucks which were supposed to be bringing food stock into the state were being used to smuggle persons. Son Wolu added that security would henceforth be tightened at the borders while trucks bringing food stock and other essentials into the state would not be allowed to carry more than seven passengers. 143 persons have been treated and discharged. We are discharging a total of 49 people. Of these 49, 48 are Nigerians and one is a foreigner, a Greek national. Governor Song Wolu noted that some businesses were to be open for seven hours from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. after the current one week extension by President Muhammadu Buhari with not more than 60% of their staff strength. This is not applicable to barbing and hairdressing salons, hotels, gyms, schools, clubs, bars, among such other businesses which remain shut till further notice. Companies and, and businesses are also encouraged to make adequate arrangements for the transportation of their staff to their places of work to reduce the risk of contamination and issues of transmission at the public places. The governor who urged residents to continue to comply with the health safety recommendations of social distancing, personal hygiene and regular hand washing called on Muslim faithful to observe prayers at home during this Ramadan period. In Lagos, Nusa, Usula, NTA News. The last four weeks of the lockdown was a strategic move by the government to contain the spread of COVID-19. And with the extension by another one week, Lagos residents have gotten homesick as the roads have become a beehive. Dr. Miami, who monitored compliance across the metropolis, reports that the checkpoints were devoid of the usual protocol. At several roads visited, there is little or no compliance to the lockdown as more vehicles were spotted on the roads. The popular Mile 12 market has remained busy ever since the commencement of the lockdown for obvious reasons. But Folks have not been complying with the clauses of the exemption, which basically rules that businesses operate between 10 a.m. and close by 2 p.m. Brother, it is an all-day, all-commerce affair, with no regards for social distancing regulations or hand washing. I've not been open shop store these days. Now this day happened. This is the first time. I just want to come and check my shop. How it is? Because. This is my trays are very cheap. This is the only market that pepper is cheap, alabaster is cheap, even fruits, everything is cheaper. That's why a lot of everybody from Lagos they come to my trade market to buy things. I'm not talking about other market they can close, with, but my trade market that you leave it for them 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Such prevailing situations, it may seem makes it difficult to achieve the objectives of the lockdown and eliminate community transmission of COVID-19. In Lagos, Dotson Ukmiami, NTA News. As Nigeria continues to strive to win the war against COVID-19, while many Nigerians, religious and corporate organizations have been supporting government with the necessary health ammunition to fight the deadly virus, Dotson Ukmiami reports. 
loaded with medical, health and safety kits made its arrival to the Lagos State Medical Warehouse as a result of the clarion call for support against COVID-19. And it's courtesy of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Lagos. The items worth $40,000 include hand wash, sanitizers, surgical and nose mask. George is here to appreciate Lagos State Government, the doctors, the nurses and the frontline health workers who are working tirelessly in making sure that we win this war. Each and every one of us will rise to the occasion by making sure that our neighbor is as happy as we are and the little that we have we share with them. Receiving the items on behalf of the state government, the medical warehouse manager says the items will add to the resources for frontline health workers. If you come out to donate, you also contribute. So I felt that it's a fight for everybody. And that's why we appreciate every donor that comes. It's not easy to come out this time, you know, because, uh, because of what is going on. The church also disclosed plans to provide food palliatives to several communities before the expiration of the lockdown. In Lagos, Dotson Ogwemi, NTA News. Those are the stories trending in Lagos. I will still stand by now in Abuja for more news. Thanks, Michael. And here in Abuja, as the coronavirus pandemic spreads to different states in the country, guests on NTA's program, Good Morning Nigeria, advocate more community enlightenment and sensitization. This was while discussing the situation in the states. Alika Okbanachi, Arua reports. The number of deaths recorded in Kano in the last one week, a member of the state's tax force on COVID-19, Professor Issa Sedi Kabubakar, says the state government is putting all measures in place to curb the further spread of the virus while ascertaining the cause of the recent deaths in the state. In the near future, we will definitely have to record all the deaths with laboratory results concerning COVID-19 and other diseases. Bayasa and Plato State recently recorded their first cases of COVID-19 and are under lockdown while contact tracing of infected persons is ongoing. I was the one who advocated for the second phase of COVID-19 and uh, I said the second phase of COVID-19 is uh, hunger. So we discovered that the interstate movement is for, has been facilitating this, this kind of spread. Uh, we now are going to close all our borders. In Castina State, Dr. Kebir Mustafa, who is also the permanent secretary at the Ministry of Health, maintained that though there are some positive cases in the state, their conditions are not critical enough to require ventilators. In our general hospital, we made available for a capacity of about 20 beds. The Federal Medical Center has a capacity of about 13 beds that can equally attend to critical patients. In the case of Cross River States, the Commissioner for Health, Dr. Beta Idu, says proactive measures are in place to ensure that the virus does not find its way into the state. For the NCDC um, workers who want to come into our state, they are very welcome. Acting Secretary, FCT Health and Human Services Secretariat, Mohamed Kao said the Federal Capital Territory has a stable growth in the number of index cases, with Mabushi leading in the number of infected persons, closely followed by Wute and Mitama districts. People will be coming back to work, so we ensure that all the places are being decontaminated. In Abuja, Alika Onachi, Parwa, NT News. The state is currently in a total lockdown as part of measures to curtail the spread of COVID-19 and the strange ailment ravaging the cosmopolitan city. Fatima Sanusi Karai monitored the level of compliance in communities, especially with increase in the mortality rates. With 115 confirmed cases of novel coronavirus in Kano State, the Northern Nigeria economic powerhouse is struggling amidst the pandemic. At a glance, streets and markets are empty as the state enters second week of stay at home. However, experts are decrying possible community transmission of the contagious virus as people in communities are defying the stay at home order. This is one community in Kano where the stay at home order 
is supposed to be in effect. But as you can see, everyone is going about his normal business as if there is no lockdown. And with the increase in the cases of mysterious deaths in the state, with no confirmed possible cause, like in the case of this man who sadly died alone on the roadside with no friends and family. There is somebody that uh, is 80 years old uh, that has been uh, on guard somewhere for some years. Uh, what I know that is that one, I will call him Alhaji. That is the only name they identified from him, but he has been on guard somewhere around the Michael site. And that was how uh, he fell sick and then died. He is among the mysterious deaths happening in the Asian city. This is a genuine cause of concern, especially with people in communities roaming streets and visiting friends. We are recording a large number of deaths happening in our city and it is disturbing every single health worker. Whatever are the causes of these deaths, we cannot shy away from the possibility that some of them are dying of COVID-19, whether or not they are recorded. Experts are therefore calling on the over 10 million people that make Kano the cultural and economic hub of the northern Nigeria to abide by the laws set by government and the general guidelines set by health professionals. Do the needful. Stay at home. In Kano, Fatima Sanusi Garai, NTA News. Thanks, Fatima. And we now have joining us live, Samira. Forum is developing robust partnership with the Nigeria Police and the leadership of the National Union of Road Transport Workers in the enforcement of interstate lockdown as a measure to contain the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. This was part of the communique at the end of the forum's seventh teleconference meeting. Abubakar Usman Akwanga completes the report. The forum says the recent new cases in the country were traced to movement of infected persons from states with record of COVID-19 to non-infected states of the pandemic, hence the need to strengthen security surveillance along state borders. The forum also engages leadership of the Nigerian Medical Association, Pharmaceutical Association of Nigeria, and the National Association of Nigerian Nurses and Midwives on sustained commitment, adequate incentives, and the inclusion of senior health workers in the state emergency operation centers. The governors commended medical and health workers for their resilience and professionalism and for keeping to the Hippocratic oath and urged them to always reach out to government with quality resolutions that will improve the health system. The forum says it will sustain effective collaboration with NCDC to provide training to health workers, including capacity to use telemedicine to strengthen infectious disease control and the use of PPE to stem the spread of the virus among health workers. The governor receives update from Governor of Edo State and Chairman Liaison Committee with Development Partners Godwin Obaseki in response to the fiscal impact of COVID-19 and commended Alika Dongote and other private donors for their contribution and support towards containing the spread of COVID-19 in the country. In Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NTA News. And a report just in size, officers on grade level 14 and above and those on essential services have been directed to resume work Effective Monday, 4th May 2020. In the first instance, a statement by the head of the civil service of the Federation, Dr. Fola Shade Yemi Eson, says 
This is in line with President Mohamed Buhari's broadcast on a phased and gradual easing of the lockdown measures occasioned by COVID-19. Offices are to open three times a week, Monday, Wednesday and Friday, and close at 2 p.m. on each day. In resuming, the concerned offices are to ensure full compliance with the directives and advice on the COVID-19 pandemic preventive measures, including maintenance of social distancing, regular washing and sanitizing of hands, as well as wearing of face masks. The head of service added that officers are advised to limit the number of visitors they receive to the barest minimum, and such visitors should also comply with safety and health directives. To further support the efforts to check the spread of the virus, permanent secretaries and chief executive officers are to ensure that hand washing and sanitation facilities are placed at entrances and strategic points in their MDAs. They are also to ensure that infrared thermometers are provided at the entrance for compulsory temperature checks. The Nigeria Interreligious Council has called on Nigerians to seek God's intervention in the face of the ravaging COVID-19 in the country. The faith leaders made the call at a prayer session led by the Catholic Archbishop of Abuja, Most Reverend Ignatius Keigama, the Chief Imam of the National Mosque, Dr. Muhammad Kabir, and several other religious leaders from the Christian and Islamic faith. Period is a crucial period. The period of the coronavirus pandemic. It is ravaging. It's eating away like a wildfire. And it is important that we are here together to pray. May God hear our prayers. May God listen to the cries of his people, whether Muslims or Christians, black or white, Africans, Americans, Asians, all of us. We come to God with a great heart of humility. We thank you, Allah, for giving us this opportunity again to worship you, to call on you to come to our aid. The entire humanity submit to your will because you are the creator. You are the one who knows how to cure this disease. Your prophet, Muhammad Asalama, made mention whenever there is disease or sickness definitely the cure is there the name that is above every name that the mountain that is confronting the nations of the world uh, in the form of coronavirus be taken away out of the way in the name of jesus we are your servants we have admitted our weaknesses nobody can take care of our station except you and And Agatha is on standby in Benin with more reports. Hello, Agatha, you're on. Awa, thank you, and welcome to Benin. Edo State Chief Judge Justice Esther Edigin has released a total of 35 inmates in correctional centers in Benin, Ubiaja, and Auchi. This was during her statewide visit to correctional centers. Ivi Oyahiri reports. 24 inmates were released in the correctional centers in Benin Metropolis. Four in Ubiaja and seven in Auchi centers also regained their freedom. Inmates who are mental, who are terminally ill, who are aged, and who have no case file were discharged. And uh, we also have those who have uh, served more than the prison term required, the punishment required in the criminal code. Those were the people also uh, discharged. Heads of the custodial centers say their release will decongest the centers. Keeping inmates that long in custody, you know, they become so apprehensive. 
Now that the CJ has come and some of them are released, it has brought some, some the tension down, which means there is hope for others who are in custody now that one day they will go. Freedom granted inmates follows directive by the federal government to decongest correctional centers across the country in view of the coronavirus pandemic. In Benin, Ivie Uyahiri, NTA News. 590 Nigerians have been empowered by the National Directorate of Employment. It is through its skill acquisition program in Edo State, with their financial entitlement fully paid by the federal government. Adobe Jojigba reports that this is after an intensive three months training. The empowerment of 590 persons is under the Vocational Skills Development Program of NDE, the Basic National Open Apprentice Scheme, and the School of Wheels, which also have 60 persons being able to garner skills who will then be able to either create wealth by employing others to become self-reliant, owning their own businesses and living above poverty. Beneficiaries were trained in beauty therapy and fashion designing. They've added value to their lives and um, they will also be able to extend a, a hand of um, fellowship to others who do not have skills. The beneficiaries promised to put the skills learned to good use. Before then, I don't have any idea about how to make use of the machine, not even know how to pass the needle in our even make to sew with the machine. When I came to I was just like a novice. I don't know anything concerning beauty therapy. But now I'm good in makeup, tying of egg guy, traditional hair. Even before I finished my program, I do some job outside to earn money for myself. Actually, it was really free. And they, were, they paid us for transportation every month for the three months that we learned. We were surprised when they paid us the stipend, even when we were sitting at home. The National Directorate of Employment was set up to promote entrepreneurship development and skill acquisition among different categories of the unemployed. In Benin, Adubaji Ujeba, NTA News. That's it from here. How are it's back to you? Very well, Agatha. First Lady Aisha Buhari has urged Nigerians to cooperate with government at all levels towards fighting COVID-19. The First Lady said this in a message during the donation of palliative materials to women groups through the Federal Ministry of Women Affairs as well as Federal Medical Center Abuja. State House Correspondent Aliu Kaber completes the report. The promotion of lives of women and children was the motive behind the donation of this medical equipment through the Get Involved program under the Future Short and the Aisha Buhari Foundation. The First Lady also donated food items and other essential commodities. These include rice, and millet, milk, sugar, tomato paste and other nutritious commodities. According to the First Lady in a message during the presentation, the items are expected to be benefited by all women groups in Nigeria in an effort to cushion the effect of the lockdown. She had done several of this kind of uh, distribution of food stock to less privileged. Uh, this time around is peculiar, peculiar in the sense that uh, with the lockdown, many women are at home, cannot go and most of their business is income, daily income generation. The Minister of Women Affairs, Pauline Thailand, who received the items, responded on behalf of the Nigerian women. Words cannot express my joy on behalf of Nigerian women for this kind of gesture. It's a very difficult and trying time for women, and this will reduce the pressure on me because in a day, the, the distress calls I've been receiving and how we've been reaching out to them, it has not been easy. But what Her Excellency has done today has really given us some bit of succor. May the good Lord continue to bless and strengthen her. The Future Assured also donated palliative materials comprising hand sanitizers, surgical masks and other medical equipment to a federal medical center, Abuja, in support towards the protection of frontline healthcare workers to deliver effectively on their responsibilities. On behalf of the management of Federal Medical Center Abuja, 
We want to thank uh, Excellency for actually donating this uh, personal protective equipment and also her future assured program for finding it necessary to actually support the cause in tackling this scourge of uh, COVID-19. The First Lady reaffirmed her commitment towards addressing the challenge of COVID-19 pandemic in the country. In Abuja, Aliu Kabir, NTA News. Also, the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, has received palliative items for the vulnerable in society from non-governmental organizations to cushion the effects of the stay-at-home directive by the federal government in order to curtail the spread of the COVID-19. Elizabeth Omori witnessed the presentation in Abuja. This gathering is not to present returnees from other countries to the media, but to receive full stuff provided by non-governmental organizations for trafficked persons, abused victims, and vulnerable persons in society, particularly women, during the lockdown period. Chickens, tubers of yam, crates of eggs, and cartons of cucumbers were donated to groups for onward distribution to their members as palliatives to cushion the effects of the stay-at-home directive. This is just our first contribution to our beneficiaries here at the FCT, but more will come to those in the FCT as well as the other six geopolitical zones of the country. I'm just praying that at this time everybody will come out and actually, you know, bring out the food. It's not really about donating cash at this time is about donating food items. The Director General of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, Julie Okadonli, who took delivery of the items, used the opportunity to call on Nigerians to be a lot as fraudsters have begun their fraudulent activities online to convince Nigerians of non-existent jobs abroad. There are lots of online recruitments going on um, internally and externally where um, adverts, you know, for non-existent jobs are placed online, you know, so please be very wary of such jobs, even scholarships and all of that. It won't take you anything to confirm from NAPTIP because we can easily verify. She urged Nigerians to continuously observe hygiene practices and report any form of violence to the agency in Abuja. Elizabeth Omori, NT News. Pan Nigerians have continued to demonstrate acts of kindness by extending assistance to the less privileged and others deeply affected by the lockdown in communities across the Federal Capital Territory. Gufan Shaj reports that more than 500 households in Lube benefited from one of such actions facilitated by a non-governmental organization based in Abuja. It has been difficult times for residents of Lube Zone 7. In many ways, the four-week-old lockdown has thrown up different shades of subsistence, but not without some snippets of warm times, and this day is one of such rare times. A non-profit group, the Esperanza Momo Foundation, has come to share with those in need. It is the group's second mission to this neighborhood, but the first was rough, and the relief material he had hoped to distribute were hijacked. This time around, the approach was different, and the result just as intended. More than 500 households received various food items, including rice, noodles, and eggs, some of the basic provisions commonly consumed in homes. We are very, very happy, and I'm very, very grateful. I'm very, very happy today for me having this gift. At least it will serve me in a long way. Though once beating, the donor agency is not shy in this case for a repeat of its kind public gesture. You know, when they say lockdown, it's not as easy as we think. You know, people are not going to work. Uh, uh, some people, they, they live on pure water. Maybe a day they have to sell pure water before they can see something to eat. We don't have much, but the little we have, we want to extend it to the people that don't have. Organizations like this group have focused more in areas and communities where women and children are mostly impacted by the lockdown and say they will come up 
with more programs to complement government's efforts in Abuja, Gufan Shaji, NTNU. And Suleiman in Kaduna is next in line with more reports. Hello, Suleiman. Thank you, Hawa, and welcome to Kaduna. Following the death of one COVID-19 patient, a recording of nine positive cases, Jigao State Government has ordered the lockdown of additional six local government areas for contact tracing. This is coming as strict measures are being taken against interstate travels. Muhammad Musa Askira has a situation report. The six local governments to go for one week lockdown are Burnikudu, Gumen, Taura, Aoyo, Miga, Goram, and Duse, Jigao State Capital. Meanwhile, the state tax force has intensified surveillance to ensure compliance on the ban on interstate travels. This measure, among others, are in line with the consensus reached by the Nigeria's Governors Forum to ensuring that interstate movements of people are restricted except for the supply of essential services, all which are viewed to containing the spread of the virus. Governor Mohamed Badur Abubakar, who stated that despite boundary and border closure, among other exit and entry points, identified in the state by the State Committee on COVID-19, some unscrupulous individuals are still tiptoeing into the state, beating the surveillance efforts of the authorities. The government is continuously putting measures in place to tackle this pandemic. Our isolation capacity will hit 280 beds in the next one week, and orders of additional equipment, including personal protective equipment to protect our frontline healthcare workers, are being placed. Uh, our team are working very hard to get uh, all the uh, necessary contacts, the primary and secondary, uh, so that uh, samples are, uh, are taken and uh, they are put on isolation. Internally, the state government has banned and marjorie baking across the state, providing them with food items at their study centers, pending when the situation stabilizes before sending them to their places of origin. As for the Almadrai received by the state government from Kano and Gombe State, as part of the ongoing Almadrai swapping between states in the northern Nigeria, Jigal State has quarantined about 1,000 to ascertain their health status before transferring them to their parents and guardians. From Dute, Muhammad Musa Askira, NTN News. Kaduna State Government has confirmed 16 new cases of COVID-19 bringing the total number of cases in the state from 9 to 25. The State Commissioner of Health, Dr. Amina Baloni, who confirmed this, says new cases are returning al majris from Kanu. Muhammad Umar Ajingi reports. The 16 additional COVID-19 positive cases are said to have sneaked into the state despite the ban on interstate travel. The cases coming from persons with travel history, the commissioner says, confirms the fears of the state government about the dangers of infection from neighboring states, appealing to the security agencies to ensure effective enforcement of the prohibition of entry into Kaduna State, as outlined in the lockdown order. While calling on the public to be vigilant, the commissioner asks the citizens to report returnees from states with high infection rates for proper monitoring. The new cases are receiving the required medical attention at the state isolation center. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umar Jingi, NTA News. More reports on news nationwide after this commercial break. Ladies and gentlemen, let me remind us all that this pandemic is spreading like wildfire. We must all arise to fight this potent and invisible common enemy by adhering to the guidelines and protocols for COVID-19, which includes personal hygiene, social distancing. We must wear masks in public places, obeying the stay-at-home order, and reporting unusual illness to the authorities for investigation.
it's time to take responsibility. So I'm staying home, watching videos and learning as well. We are all aware of the pandemic hitting the world today. The COVID-19 virus is real. A big thank you to all our health workers, doctors, nurses, everybody fighting this pandemic in their own way. Please stay home, save lives. Prevention is better than cure. Stay responsible. strong immune system increases the chances of victims surviving COVID-19. A corruption-free society creates opportunities for citizens to thrive and prosper. Build your immunity. Stop corruption now. Report all acts of corruption to ICPC on this toll-free number 0800 this message is brought to you by ICPC and NTA. The Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, under the leadership of its President General, His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, Alaji Muhammad Saad Abubakar, CFR MNI, congratulates the Muslim Ummah on the commencement of the fasting of the month of Ramadan beseeching Allah to grant us the blessings of the month and to inscribe us among the inhabitants of Al-Jannah. The council has directed the suspension of congregational tarawih prayers, majalis at tafsir Quranic sessions, and etikaf seclusion in the mosques during the month of Ramadan. Islamic scholars and organizations are to employ the electronic media for dissemination of tafsir and other da'wah activities. Janaza, washing, shrouding, prayer and burial of Muslim victims are to be carried out by officials of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, and other government health officials. Detailed guidelines on the suspension and the janaza are available on the council's website and are being published in national dailies and sent to the federal and state governments as well as leadership of state councils and various Islamic organizations. The Quran says, make not your own hands, contribute to your destruction. His Eminence the Sultan praised the Almighty Allah to preserve our lives beyond the Ramadan and grant us its blessings. Mr. Yusuf Nwoha, Director, Administration, Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Announcer. It's nationwide. Thanks for staying. In the face of increasing cases of COVID-19 recorded in the country, Nigeria requires more than ever a vaccine that, curbs, that can curb the spread of the disease. It is against this backdrop that the Cross River State Government seeks the assistance of the federal government to set up a vaccine manufacturing plan to mitigate the pandemic and keep Nigeria's economy afloat. Justina Etim reports. As the dreaded COVID-19 continues to spread to different states of the Federation, Cross River State is still standing tall as one without a case of the disease. This feat, the state's Commissioner for Health attributes to stringent measures earlier put in place to curb the spread of the pandemic. It is not compulsory that every state in Nigeria should have a COVID-19 case. We want this pressure to cease. Reacting to rumors peddled that the state is concealing cases of COVID-19, the commissioner says, rather than being castigated, Cross River State should be commended for sustaining its COVID-19 free status. She, however, called on journalists to verify information before publishing in order to avoid instilling fear in the public. In Calabar, Justina Etam, NTA News. And as part of its intervention to mitigate the damaging impacts of the deadly coronavirus, the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Dr. Isa Ali Ibrahim Pantami, on Wednesday inaugurated the NIDA Academy Virtual Learning Center in Abuja. He said the launch of the academy became necessary in view of the ever-dynamic nature of the world, especially with the advent of the COVID-19. The academy, which is free, is expected to 
enable the ministry create a pool of trained and skilled youth, encourage continuous learning at home, build, upgrade and integrate capacity amongst Nigerians as well as bridge the gap between the academia and the industry while enabling public servants to acquire basic skills they may need to fit into the emerging post-COVID-19 economy. The minister said the ministry is currently working to begin the hosting of future Federal Executive Council meetings virtually pending approval by the president. And Asmao joins us now from our Sokoto Network Center with more reports. It's good to see you. Good to see you too, Hawa. Good evening and welcome to Sokoto. As part of efforts to curtail the spread of COVID-19, Sokoto State Government has approved the mass production of face masks and hand sanitizers for onward distribution to the public. Dalhatu Abdullahi reports that the approval was part of the decision taken by the State Government after the Governor's meeting with Technical Committee on COVID-19. The report. Part of the new measures is the approval for the production of 100,000 face masks and about 700 special hand washing facilities and sanitizers for distribution to the public and the strategic places, including mosques and markets. So far, 116 bed capacity facilities have been provided for the isolation and treatment of confirmed COVID-19 patients. These include 50 bed capacity at the Infectious Disease Hospital Amanawa Isolation Center, 30 bed capacity by Medicine Science Frontiers at Murtala Muhammad Hospital, Sokoto, 20 bed capacity by the Catholic Diocese Hospital, and the 6 bed capacity at the Usman Amford University Teaching Hospital, Sokoto. We are supporting the state to achieve the already drafted plan which we met on place. And that is the reason why we directed the, uh, the, the Department of Pharmaceutical Service to commence uh, the production, local production, production of this center. Sakuto State Government is also planning to use Girinya and Shukra hotels for the isolation of the traced contacts for medical examinations, while Catholic Diocese Sakoto had also volunteered a 30-bed hotel accommodation for the same purpose. The NCDC is carrying out tests on the suspected COVID-19 samples from Sokoto, KB and Zamfara states at the Usman Amford University Teaching Hospital Sokoto Test Center. In Sokoto, Dalata Abdullahi, NTA News. The complex nature of the virus COVID-19 has continued to be a source of concern for both scientists and non-scientists. Even more worrisome is the degree of poor information that is spread by unrealizable sources. In this report, Musa Abubakar explored reliable sources to clear misconceptions about COVID-19. These are worrying times with the spread of COVID-19 infection and associated deaths taking toll on the world. For those infected, there's fear and uncertainty, while those not infected have the luxury to observe social distancing. But there is a lot of disinformation about the virus on and off social media platforms in Sokoto. First is the method of transmission. Coronavirus is not airborne, as some people thought, and confirmed by Nigeria Center for Disease Control. There is said to be droplet transmission from person to person when an infected person coughs or sneezes. Virus from droplet could last on plastic surface for three days, on steel surfaces for two days, and on cardboard for 24 hours. The NCDC also warned against the use of hydroxychloroquine as there is insufficient evidence at the moment from current trials as to their effective use in treatment of patients with COVID-19. And for those who don't believe that the disease is real, I would like to appeal to members of the public to understand that coronavirus disease is real. To know that this COVID-19 is real, we've seen it all over the world. Scientists continue to understand the virus. It is worthy of note to know that practicing social distancing by staying at home is the best form of defense to guard against the spread of the virus. In Sokoto, I am Musa Abubakar, NTA News. And that's it from Sokoto. The news will continue with Hawa in Abuja. Good evening. Very well, Asmao. And moving on, 
The All Progressives Congress felicitates with Nigerian workers on the commemoration of the 2020 International Workers' Day. The party spokesman, Lanry Isa Onilu, in a statement, urges Nigerian workers to use the lockdown to arm themselves with productive skills that will enable them productively function in the changing global work culture and tap into opportunities that the eventual and gradual easing of the lockdown will bring. The APC acknowledges the resilience, patience and commitment of Nigerian workers in the tasks of nation building and assures workers that the federal government will continue to prioritize their welfare. The APC urged workers not to relent in their support for the current administration as the nation battles the COVID-19. In addition to getting the nation's economy back on its trajectory of growth as quickly as possible. The North Central Governors Forum says it will take drastic actions against armed bandits as they have refused to comply with the amnesty terms offered them. Chairman of the North Central Governors Forum, Abu Bakr Sani Bello said that these during an interaction with the media and other interest groups at the government house, Mina. Governor Sani Bello noted that it has become clear and obvious that the amnesty program for some of the bandits is not working out. Hence, the need for the forum to resort to whatever means available to end their nefarious activities. Abubakar Sani Bello says ending banditry will ensure a safe environment for normal social and economic life to thrive. And seeing that it is not in sight with the continuous attacks and cattle wrestling denying the locals access to their farms, the amnesty program may have to be terminated to avert farming and starvation. The bandits have refused to allow for our farmers in the rural areas to operate in some areas, not in all states. And the danger here is we're heading towards destruction, we're heading towards starvation. It has become clear and obvious that the amnesty program for some of this bandit is not working. And what it means is that government should take its full responsibility and act like a government. And act like a government means we can no longer tolerate this nonsense and we have to take serious and drastic actions using whatever means. A teleconference has been organized between the governors of Zamfara, Kebi, Kaduna, Sokoto and Kasina states who share common boundaries to review stands and come up with a policy on how best to end bandits' havoc within the shortest possible time. Kaduna State Police Command has arrested 91 suspected kidnappers and bandits. Major Ma Adamu reports that various arms and ammunition were recovered from the suspects. The suspects were apprehended in connection with various criminal offenses, including kidnapping, banditry, and car snatching. The Commissioner of Police, Karuna State Command Umar Musa Muri, also confirmed that 15 AK 47 rifles, 1,500 rounds of ammunition, 4.5 million naira cash, 9 vehicles, 20 motorcycles, and 10 locally made guns were recovered from the suspects. In another development, the State Police Command says it has successfully squared conviction of 38 suspects of various criminal offenses. The police have also arrested a total of 986 violators of the the lockdown order in the state. The police authority therefore calls for useful security information from the public with a view to arresting more criminals to the people in Kaduna state. Majama Adamu, NTA News. Secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, has commiserated with the Adamawa state governor, Amadu Fintari, over the loss of his mother. Boss Mustafa described late Fatima Umaru Badami as a woman who will be remembered for moral forthrightness and selfless values within her family and community. The SGF praise God, comfort and grant the entire family the fortitude to bear the loss and rest her soul. And that's Nationwide Today. We thank you for being part of it. Good evening, but remember to stay safe.